Hello, welcome to another episode of New Gameplay Today. Our Steph Cork joined today by... Well, let's just say you could forget what I say about other casts. This is the real deal. Okay, we've got Dan Tack. Hey, it's great to be Hello. here, Jeff. Thanks. We've got Alex Stadnick. Speedrunning Stadnick coming at you, baby. Here we go. And what are we looking at here, fellas? Bravely Default 2. Bravely Default 2. Thought I'd sing it for you a little bit. I love it. It's a nice little ditty. Thank you. Now, uh, Mr. Tack is reviewing this. It's a sequel to Bravely Default, correct? Right? Yeah, uh, yeah at, the, at the time this video is up, you should be able to check the video out on the uh, the, the review out on the site, actually. Mm. It's true, I did review it, and we are in combat. If you like combat, then this might be the right, the right game for you, because there's a lot of it. Yep. You're going to be grinding your way to victory uh, in a hardcore way. Not nearly like this. You're not going to be spending a whole lot of time. Once you get, once you get comfortable with the game, you're not going to spend a whole lot of time punching in independent commands. You're going to have, uh, you know, you're just going to have, like, you're gonna hit a button and things are gonna explode when it comes to a typical <laughs> fight. Bosses, you'll have to be more considerate about. Mm -hmm. Definitely. What is this game? I'm sure you're all very curious. This I game, know. Hark this game, uh, you know, is sort of a. It harkens back to the, the glory days, the early Final Fantasy games. Job classes were coming into into you know, into the scene. This is all about customizing your characters via job classes and equipment and making broken builds to fight whatever you're up against. Again, very combat-centric game. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't play it for the dialogue or the story. But if you like, <laughs> if you like crafting mm -hmm. very cool builds and like trying to break the game in, in interesting ways, this might be the game for you. Lots of fighting, lots of looting, lots yeah. of XP. Oh, yeah. Now, Alex, I need you to tell me everything you know about the guy with the ears. What <laughs> is going on with the And a ponytail. This oh, yeah. You should have, all the right buttons. You should have seen him in his uh, black mage getup too. He's a, he's styling. Um, yeah. Elvis is currently uh, that's the character. He is currently uh, his job is Beastmaster. So okay. if you're a fan of of pocket monsters, let's say, mm -hmm. um, he has the ability to capture weaker creatures, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, he has been. I'll show you right now. So like, I don't love that you can only use them once, but. You know, you can use them in basically any fight. Uh, kind of overpowered in some of the boss battles, which is really good. Um, fashion sense, you know, not what I would pick, but that's, you know, teach right. their own, right? Um, so yeah, the, the Beastmaster class in this game is actually very similar to play Octopath Traveler. Pretty similar to the Hunter in that game. Okay. The Hunter class. So you can capture opponent, opposing creatures and then use them like they were a spell for a, for a very powerful effect in combat, essentially. Yeah. Later on, as you advance through the Beastmaster class, you can, uh, you'll get things that you like automatically capture creatures, so you don't have to worry about using the capture command or anything, just like you're oh, just okay. randomly collecting them after the battle. Yeah, uh, so yeah, some of the some of the chase monsters have especially powerful abilities to go and hunt down if you really want to wreck a boss. Mm -hmm. uh, again, that's if you want to go into the Beastmaster. Right. You, know, you can, you can, you, there's a lot of classes in this game, and you can mix and match them all in some very interesting ways. That's, that's sort of, the, that kind of alchemy is really where uh, the game shines, I think. Actually. Yeah, I have. I have the name is that. not just a uh, non sequitur; it refers to gameplay mechanics, correct? Yeah. Well, you do break. The, so the mechanics that have been in since the first game are braving and defaulting. Essentially, right. you can you can wager turns. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what this really amounts to for most players, though, is just braving four times to annihilate the enemy before they kill you. <laughs> but in a boss fight, you have to be a little bit more careful and sort of default your way up to acquiring BP points before you're ready to unleash attacks. Basically, you want to be defending when the boss is going to hit you with a big strike. In regular combat, the decision is almost always going to be Brave times four, which will let you like cast four Thundaras. Like he's casting a Thundara now. So you do that four times in a row instead of just once, and it would just blow everybody away in one single turn. For uh, sure. By braving, so. I, I will say some of the, the early bosses, or one in particular had really kind of subverted my expectations on the system too in an in a interesting way. It was frustrating at first, but I, I I can't speak to the later bosses, but I really have enjoyed the challenge of that and figuring out what makes some of the bosses tick. So just kind of showing off some of more of the world. Uh, there was a demo that came out earlier this year, um, or, or in 2020, I think, that showed off one specific realm. This is closer to the start of the game. Um, and I wanted to show off just a couple more classes, or excuse mm -hmm. me, jobs. Um, uh, right now I'm using the Vanguard Adele 
Uh, she comes, I love the, uh, her crosscut ability. It is super powerful, uh, especially when paired with the monk, which she just was. Also, I'm gonna run through these opponents because this is pretty early game, but um, just find, like Tax said, finding the combinations for these characters has have been really fun and, and figuring out what works best in concert with one another. Yeah, definitely. Uh, again, mixing and matching builds and specialties, like you can take abilities from one class and stick them in another class and you can subclass and there is a lot of different class synergies you can experiment with along with weapons, especially later on. Later on, you get way more interesting abilities than the, as you'd expect, than the cookie cutter stuff you get uh, available right away. Like, hey, I'm a knight, or hey, I'm a healer. Hey, I'm the, you know, the glass cannon caster. You get all that stuff right at the beginning. Right. But later on, you'll unlock uh, some more interesting jobs that you can mix and match. And, and maybe... Peacock. <laughs> maybe even like, uh, there's a lot to do. There's a lot to do later on. Um, in terms of fight, figuring out new ways to use old classes, say that. Tack, I'm gonna I'm gonna show off one of my favorite parts of this game, which may sound weird, but uh, in the beginning, you meet oh this lady who uh, owns a boat who tries to give it to you, and you're like, nah, I don't I, I don't need it. But she's like, okay, I'll just lend it to you. But what it does is when you put the console to sleep, or before you put the con their, their switch to sleep, you hit start exploring, and you, t you put the, the console to sleep. How many times can I say sleep? Um, but up to, you can have it off for 12 hours and then it explores quote unquote for you and picks up some of the best boosting items that I've experienced in the game. So like extra job points, extra XP, um, boosts for like attack, defense, the whole whole shebang. And I really, it's like, I kind of get excited to, to open up the game in the morning, um, see what I got. I think it's a nice way to make you feel involved, even though when you're not playing it. You do get reward. It does reward you for not playing. It rewards you for taking a break. However, okay, let me, let me you know, later in the game, you're going to get these things called monster baits, okay? So let's say you're in, you're in a zone and you're fighting like insect monsters and you're really crushing them, right? But maybe you can't beat the boss. Uh, these monster baits will let you fight like three to four of them in a row and give you a multiplier to your job points. So you can just start annihilating battles and collecting all kinds of loot. There may be some awesome job skills you can combine with that, like from the thief, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, that'll let you, you know, steal stuff from these monsters. So you could end up with a just a just a giant garbage bag full of loot off of uh, in very quick time using these abilities. Like you can farm lots of levels and lots of loot very quickly if you know what you're doing. You won't have to chase down every little fight like you're doing now and, and like, you know, painstakingly grind it up. Yeah, for sure. When you're leveled sufficiently, like those enemies that run away from you in the overworld map, can you just defeat them without entering combat? You cannot just defeat them without entering combat, but you can choose not to fight them. They're running from you after right. all. Right, right. So there were, there were several dungeons in my playthrough that I was already high from farming up to defeat like let's say the last boss that i defeated mm -hmm. so i'd go to the next dungeon and all the enemies would run for me and i'm you know that was fine i was already yeah. good but then i would reach another point where i'd be like okay i need to level up some new jobs to be able to to get the skills that i think are required for this next boss fight so uh i'll go chase down some stuff that i'm stronger than but it doesn't matter because i'm just sort of using the monster baits to abuse the job point bonuses so I'm crushing four fights in one more or less plus a bonus at the end and I'm gonna use my farm build on those fights, right? So I'm gonna get lots more stuff. So you're basically, I know the other games had the on and off switch for whether or not random encounters would be there. And a lot of players are very miffed that this version wasn't going to have that. But it essentially forms the same thing. You're either progressing or you're farming. Those are your two modes of play. Right. For sure. I, uh, I think we have one more thing to show you before we uh, say goodbye. We've got a town. Yes, we do. I if love you, towns. If you played the demo, you'll be familiar with uh, Savalon here. The the water qu crystal is running amok on the uh, desert town, as you can see. Yeah, and this uses, uh, you know, not to get too deep into the story or anything, but yeah, there's just the four crystals, the warriors of light, all that fun stuff that you remember from back in the day. <laughs> not only is the game systems and mechanics a, a love letter to the past, but the story sort of follows that same rules. For sure. In a lot of ways. You're making a beeline towards something. What's going on, buddy? Yeah, I'm gonna play a little, little cards. You gambling man, Cork? Uh, that's one of my favorite parts of these types of games. Oh, there you go. I actually, yeah, 
Yeah. I I really enjoyed this. This was a fun little bonus because let's. Let, I'm gonna be brutally honest here. Uh -oh. You're gonna just be fighting stuff basically this whole game, right? That's mm -hmm. what this game is. You're fighting. You're, you're fight. You're farming. You're fighting a boss, or you're doing side stuff. This is one of the neat side things you can do, especially if you've got an affinity for the old triple triad game from. Gosh, when did it even start? Final Fantasy VIII? Was it eight? Sure. I, was I think a, you're right, yeah. Nation. And then I, I played a ton of it in Final Fantasy XI, which was the first MMO. That's when I got really into it. Um, and obviously there's a modern day version in 14. But this is basically this game's take on Triple Triad, which is a fun little way to play with stuff that you collect. And like Gwent, you'll go around the world, battle other people, and you'll get rewarded for it with cards and uh, and stuff. And you can become a champion oh. in this game. So I'll, it's fun. I'll it's being it's a, a champion. And believe me, you're going to want to do side count like tons like this uh, over the course of the game to sort of rest your brain from kill, 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 kill. <laughs> That's all you know. You just farm, 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 loot, 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 loot. I remember one time I was just, I just, you can fill your bag up and loot at an alarming rate. Like, you know, 15 minutes of farming in this game is probably like two hours of farming in another game. Once you know what you're doing, you can get a ton of stuff in a short time. So you want to you want to take breaks and enjoy stop and smell the roses. So. Not only can you play this little cool game like this, but there, uh, there are mini bosses scattered around the world map called rare monsters. Be very careful when fighting those. They are way, way, way stronger than the zone that they're in. I'm talking like 40 levels higher than what oh, you're... Oh, You will die instantly if you run into them by accident. So be very careful if you're like exploring a little peninsula or like a little alcove or something and you see a monster that's just sitting in one spot, don't go whack it. It will kill you. It will kill you, you I will promise. will not have a good time. I uh, I think that's a good look. How about you guys? Excellent. Yeah, check out the review on the website and uh, yeah. Yeah, when is this out? It is out tomorrow. Beautiful. All right, well, thanks for showing the stuff, guys. We appreciate it. Wow. That person was really good at playing that game. Those other people were really good at talking about it, too. If you find yourself saying either of these things, subscribe to Game Informer on YouTube for new episodes of New Gameplay Today, every week covering the hottest new and upcoming releases.